Real Truth Daily. This is Daily Truths with Dave Alvin. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Truths. Today, I want to talk about how you feel about your pastor. Now, I assume that your pastor is perfect. Not. <laughs> Let me read this to you. The perfect pastor preaches exactly 10 minutes. The perfect pastor condemns sin roundly, but never hurts anyone's feelings. The perfect pastor works from 8 a.m. until midnight and is also the church janitor. The perfect pastor makes $100 a week, wears stylish clothes, drives a new car that reflects well on your church, buys 10 excellent books each week, and donates $80 a week to the parish. The perfect pastor is 29 years old and has 40 years worth of experience. (laughs) I remember that when I was 29. (laughs) Above all, the perfect pastor is very attractive. The perfect pastor has a burning desire to work with teenagers, and he spends most of his time with senior citizens. The perfect pastor smiles all the time with a straight face because he has a sense of humor that keeps him seriously dedicated to the parish. The perfect pastor makes 15 home visits a day and is always in the office to be handy when he's needed. The perfect pastor always has time for parish council and all of its committees. He never misses a meeting of any parish organization and is always busy evangelizing the unchurched. The perfect pastor is broken enough to understand all people, but perfect in mental, emotional, and physical health. The perfect pastor is always in the next parish over where your friend attends church. (laughs) If your pastor does not measure up, Simply send this notice to six other parishes that are tired of their pastors, too. Then bundle up your pastor and send him to the parish at the top of your list. If everyone cooperates, in one week you'll receive 1,643 pastors from which to choose. One of them should be perfect. (laughs) We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, and Jesus begins this parable. And he says this, there was a master of a house who planted a vineyard. Okay, the master is God. The vineyard is the nation of Israel and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to the tenants. The tenants were the religious leaders, the Jewish leaders down through the years and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants that's the prophets of the Old Testament and, and John the Baptist. He sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And he, and the, the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. What's this talking about? This is talking about the prophets who were sent to God's people down through the years. And the religious leaders, the Jewish leaders, did one of three things. They stoned some of them, they killed a couple of them, and they hated and beat others. This is what they did to many of the prophets of the Old Testament. Now, the prophets were God's representatives sent to the people of God. Who are God's representatives sent to the people of God today? It's pastors. I want to say some things about pastors today. First of all, no pastor is perfect. No pastor has all the gifts. I mean, every pastor has certain gifts, but not all of them. And a lot of times when pastors go to a church, the people of God expect him to have all the gifts. He's got to be a great preacher, a great administrator, great counselor, all these different things. And no pastor has all the gifts. So what do you do? Look at the positive traits that your pastor has and maximize those traits. Focus on his strengths, minimize, and don't focus on his weaknesses. I often told vicars when they'd ask me, what consists of a really great pastor? And I said, it's summarized in one word, love. Love for God, love for his word, and love for the people he serves. If your pastor loves God, loves the word, and loves you as a congregation, you are blessed. And finally, pray for your pastor. Pray that the Lord gives him strength. 
Pray that the Lord gives him clarity when he is preaching the word of God, properly discerning the word of truth. Pray that the Lord gives him good health and pray that the Lord continues to give him a love for God, a love for the word and a love for his people. Pray for boldness for your pastor. Okay, so this is just a quick summary of what you can do with your pastor. You don't want to send him off. You don't want to say, oh, boy, I wish we had that pastor down the street or I wish I... You know, St. John's has a really good pastor. Maybe we can make a trade. (laughs) Love your pastor. Support and encourage him. Minimize his strengths. I'm sorry. Minimize his weaknesses. Focus on his strengths. Pray for him consistently. Realize he's not perfect. And just thank God that you have have a pastor at all. Right now in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, if we continue at the current rate, just 15 years from now, half the pulpits in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod will be empty. So many young men are not considering going into the parish ministry because they think it's too tough. And I will tell you, it is tough. But... We need pastors to fill these pulpits, to shepherd God's people, and to evangelize the lost. So pray for more workers in the harvest, because we need more workers to be sent into the harvest field to evangelize, to instruct, to train, to educate, to love, to care, and most importantly, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is today's Daily Truth. Have a great day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to Daily Truths with Dave Allman. Pastor Dave Allman is the pastor of Mount Hope Church in Boulder, Colorado. If this ministry is blessing you, please consider supporting us by sharing this channel with a friend. You can also like, comment, subscribe, or leave a review. This helps us tremendously. Come back tomorrow for your next Daily Truth.